Mind affects body, body affects mind. When you can get care for both at the same place, it improves the quality of the care and overall health outcomes. Most people come to their doctor when they don't feel good. Once a patient has the insight that they have a problem, and it's usually just they have a symptom that's trouble, troubling them or there's something that's distressing them, going to a doctor's office is comfortable or reasonable, uh, especially if it's a place you've been before for other health care problems. I think that about 70% of all the people who need behavioral health services seek that from their primary care provider. The barrier, the psychological barrier to going uh, to see your primary care uh, practitioner is a lot lower than going to an entirely new place that you'd never been before. We've noticed that people turn to their primary care um, health providers because there's a lot less stigma involved. As soon as somebody says, I think you need to go to the mental health center, there's a gasp of, I'm not crazy. So I do believe patients will tell their primary care clinicians things that they wouldn't tell a stranger, someone they hadn't met before, someone they have no history with. We might as well meet patients where they are, which is at the doctor's office. When people access behavioral health care in a traditional medical setting, they can build on the patient-provider relationship that they have already established. Relationships are the probably primary therapeutic tool that primary care providers have. And behavioral health clinicians who work with them uh, know that and are viewed by the patients uh, as an extension of, oh, this is my doctor's team or this is my nurse practitioner's um, healthcare team. They, they all work together to t help take care of me. It's a completely different way of working than traditional mental health. We work as a team, so um, we don't have separate offices. We sit um, side by side in a pod model. The provider will come out from working with a patient, and I'm right there. We're all physically co-located, so the primary care clinician, his or her support team, which would be a, a case manager, a referral case manager, a medical assistant. There's usually a, a nurse who manages the patient flow on the team and the behavioral health clinician. We're all there, we can all see each other, we can all see what patients are in rooms and which patients are waiting and who they're waiting for. For example, a, a patient with a new diagnosis of diabetes. The therapist can go in and speak with those patients directly right after I come out of the room and say, it sounds like your depression is worse. I would really like you to see a therapist. Great. Would two seconds from now be okay? Let me go talk to my behavioral health professional. Mostly the medical provider, the primary care provider, has the primary relationship with their patient. So doing that warm handoff and actually introducing me so that the patient sees the medical provider and me, like they get that image that we are on the same team, we're, we're working together, and um, it helps start to build that relationship of trust. One of our BHPs has done a lot of research into um, kind of, as it were, the cohabitation of mental health and physical health in the same physical settings. And if you move a behavioral health professional off the pod onto another pod, that reduces the chance that a patient will see them. If you move them onto another floor, it reduces their chance even more. And even if they're a referral that you have to send them to and they're across the street, she says that only 30% of the people will want to cross the street and go see that therapist. So the fact that we can engage them immediately into the same room is also of utmost importance. The BHPs use tools that are flexible enough to work in a primary care setting, tools that can be used in a variety of situations. We primarily use two clinical models. Um, one is a solution-focused brief treatment model where we pay very close attention to what resources a patient may be bringing that they had forgotten about. Um, one of the questions that we frequently ask somebody is, was there a time in your life when this wasn't a problem? And we begin to understand from that patient what they might have had going for them at a time when it wasn't the problem, and then we can begin to rebuild that particular scenario based on what that client has already described as being successful.
So solution-focused brief therapy is particularly appropriate for the primary care setting because uh, primary care is very fast-paced. So brief therapy works pretty well in, in that setting. We don't have to spend a lot of time doing lengthy evaluations. And actually focusing on uh, problems doesn't actually tend to help people move forward with making the kind of changes that can improve their health in a, in a more timely manner. Motivational interviewing is the second approach that we use, and that is a, a questioning technique that helps us determine just where a person falls on the continuum of motivation for change. It's amazing how much you can help people in a brief amount of time, actually. Um, sometimes people just need a little bit of reassurance, a little bit of a, of, um, a reframe can be really helpful, helping people identify the things that they're already doing that are helping, and um, building their motivation to do those things more, um, giving people brief little um, tools or strategies that they can use that they haven't thought of before. There's a, a, a lot you can do, um, you can't fix everything, but there's a lot you can do in a brief amount of time. There are a number of ways that BHPs can be used in the clinic. There's a wide variety of reasons why a medical provider might call me into a, an exam room to see a patient. Um, including prenatal education, um, parenting support, uh, depression, anxiety, helping screen somebody for bipolar um, or, or some other mood disorder. I think the two things that we see most frequently in the clinics in terms of behavioral health need is depression and anxiety. This is a population that we serve who um, are really uh, you know, hand to mouth in terms of income, their families are stressed, um, their housing is fragile, um, life is complicated for them. The fact that it's a community health center with low income people makes it almost the perfect place for an integrated behavioral health program because um, this is a population that doesn't have access to be behavioral health care and that really needs um, behavioral health care. They might have language barriers or cultural barriers to be becoming fully part of their community. Um, they have high unemployment. And all of those circumstances contribute to folks being depressed and being anxious. You know, there are some patients who um, are a little standoffish, and that's fine. Um, you know, that happens. But for the most part, people are generally um, really hungry for, for that kind of um, help. Being on the pod, the provider can quickly consult with the behavioral health professional. So a provider will come out and say, Michael, I need help with this patient. They're, um, they're having trouble sleeping or they're depressed or they're anxious. Um, so usually I'll go in and I do a brief introduction to the patient about what my role is at the clinic. And, um, and then we go right into um, talking about what would be helpful in a, in a brief amount of time. What, what, what's the main thing that they're wanting help with? So we try and identify that right away. We see patients anywhere from one to six times um, is, a, is our general rule. Um, so we do some kind of brief um, therapy, behavioral health treatments with people. And then there's a group of people that we see episodically. So maybe I'll see them two or three times and I won't see them for a while. Then they'll come back, I'll see them two or three times again. And in community health care, we do have a kind of lifetime model of care. So um, unlike community mental health center, we don't have to close patients. So there's that freedom to see someone for a while, let them go out on their own, um, and then maybe they'll come back in a year or so and check in. When we can help before it's a crisis, when we can help when it's just a, an irritant or a minor stress factor for a family and point them in the right direction and support them with what resources they may actually not realize that they have, um, or bring in other community resources, I think we can make a huge difference. Prevention is really huge in, in what we're doing. Um, I think there's a lot, of, um, a lot of crises, a lot of mental health problems that we're catching at an earlier stage um, that if we weren't here would blossom into some bigger problem later on down the line. So uh, we're really preventing, I think, in a lot of cases, um, more chronic conditions from becoming more chronic. I'm sure that we are reducing emergency room visits, hospitalizations, um, arrest numbers. 
um, because we're helping people manage that stress before it gets to another level. The behavioral health professional and clinicians use the same health record system and enter their notes in the same chart. It's very helpful to have an integrated health record, an electronic health record, so that the primary care clinician, the behavioral health clinician, can see in the same chart what, what each other are doing, uh, especially if there isn't an opportunity to discuss the case face to face. In addition to providing support, the BHP can help a clinician stay on schedule. That's another key issue, actually, is how, is how having the behavioral health service saves the provider's time, because um, with these complex issues um, that patients present with, providers can get stuck. Um, patient comes in who's suicidal, and that's going to be an hour-long, hour-and-a-half visit if you don't have a behavioral health professional there. Um, since we are there, that ends up being maybe a 10, 15-minute visit for the provider, and they say, this is really an important thing that we want to address. I want you to talk to the behavioral health counselor. And they come and get me, and I can really um, address the situation and spend more time. Medications are a vital part of treating some types of behavioral health issues, so pharmacy access is essential. We have a pharmacy in our clinic, uh, a little pharmacy outlet. Other clinic uh, sites have a full pharmacy, very affordable medications there. Newer drugs that are not generic, um, if the patient qualifies, they can apply for an indigent patient assistance program, and we have staff who help people do that. We do have psychiatric consultation here um, when people are um, appropriate and interested in getting medications. Optimally, the psychiatrist is a resource to the primary care uh, team and um, gives us guidance on uh, what's going on with the patient from a diagnostic perspective and what the suggested management would be and what to do when the management uh, doesn't seem to be helping the problem. And then we also have, uh, uh, I, I serve as a liaison to the mental health center, so um, when people are interested and motivated, which is not everybody, but um, when they are, then I can help transition them to kind of more specialty care. Behavioral health professionals do couples and family therapy and are utilized in group visits. I really like doing groups. It's, it's one of, the, one of the, the things I really enjoy as a psychologist. And so we've done, I've been involved with a chronic pain management program, uh, which is group focused. So those are groups run by myself and a medical provider. And we, we both talk about medications and do patients leave with a prescription, but we also use a psychoeducational model. So um, we talk about other ways to manage pain and adapt to living with chronic pain besides medications. Um, that's been uh, challenging, but a big success. Patients have been really happy with that. Um, we've also, I've also been involved with uh, diabetic groups, um, and we've had some ongoing groups for depression and anxiety. Um, and generally, uh, groups have been a big hit. I, I love having behavioral health clinicians around. Um, I, I need help to caring for my patients, and uh, I don't have a problem acknowledging that there's services they can provide better than I can. This is help. This is big help. And it helps, um, it helps us stay uh, on track in terms of providing care to as many people as possible during the day. Um, you only need one patient in crisis um, to make your day very difficult uh, in terms of serving the other people who need to be seen and getting your documentation done and feeling like this patient's going to be okay. I was expecting it to be harder to make the transition from traditional mental health to primary care. But um, I would say within the first couple of months, um, not only did I feel welcome, but I felt really needed because there's such, the primary care providers were so happy to have someone here to help them with these difficult patients. We can show that our patients are getting better. If their depression scores aren't dropping, their blood pressure is. Or uh, if their depression scores aren't dropping, their hemoglobin A1C is dropping. Uh, so there, there's no doubt that our patients are getting better with the integrated care that we provide. Patients are generally very thankful and appreciative to have um, access to mental health care. Um, a lot of people have difficulty um, getting into mental health care, but also um, because we don't present it as mental health care specifically, um, 
you know, I'm a behavioral health professional. Um, it's a, it's a lot. It's generally a lot easier for people to talk to me than it would be to talk to a traditional psychotherapist, because they don't think about it as psychotherapy. I get very positive feedback from patients about the integration of behavioral health into their into their medical care. Uh, things that they say are that they appreciate being able to talk to somebody when they, you know, not having to go to some other location to see somebody, um, that it doesn't cost them extra money. They appreciate that it's, you know, considering that part of their physical health care is also taking care of their, of their stress levels, of their emotional health, of their relationships. Mm -hmm.